going in three, two, one. Let's go get this son of a bitch. Hi everyone, it's Charlie. This is going to be my Avengers Endgame full review. Hopefully you've had a chance to see the movie. Everything we've been doing the last 10 years in this universe has been building to this. So we got to talk about everything, about these character arcs, how we feel like they left these characters, how well their character arcs work in general, how well the movie works just as a movie by itself, because it is a crazy big movie. There is so much stuff going on during this. Be sure to subscribe to get all the Marvel videos. It's only going to get crazier leading up into Spider-Man Far From Home at the beginning of July. So there's going to be a lot of Marvel stuff happening between now and then. We'll do a new round of the Infinity Gauntlet giveaway. All you have to do to enter that is be a subscriber and leave an Avengers comment on the video. Obligatory spoiler warning, careful for spoilers for Avengers Endgame if you have not seen it yet because we'll be talking about very specific parts of the movie. So here we go, Avengers Endgame. Part of the story is the end. Every story has an end. That's why Kevin Feige said that the biggest idea that they had for this movie is, is wouldn't it be revolutionary for superhero movies if we actually had an end to their story? Whereas in the traditional comic book genre, what you'll find is they'll just reboot titles when they bring on new artists or they'll have a big universe reboot when they feel like things aren't working or people aren't really interested in the stories that they're telling anymore. Like we're bringing in a bunch of new artists. We're just going to wipe the slate clean and pretend like all the things that happened to these characters did not happen. We're going to start fresh from square one where they really can't do that with the movies. Like you have actors that are slowly aging out of their characters, people like Chris Evans that are ready to stop playing their characters. So how do you give them an ending to their story that feels definitive and feels like the right ending that fans won't just assume you're going to roll back with the very next movie that you release? Like Spider-Man Far From Home is the next movie that's coming out after this. But Kevin Feige is calling it the tail end, like a little holdover from Marvel Phase 3 and not technically part of Phase 4. That's a whole other thing. There are a couple plot twists during the movie that leave you with a couple really big questions coming out. In terms of Avengers movies, every once in a while you'll see something that seems like a plot hole. There are a couple moments like that during Avengers Endgame, but I don't think of them so much as plot holes, just more unanswered questions that they'll answer with the future movies. Like Spider-Man Far From Home will answer all of your Spider-Man questions that you have after Avengers Endgame. So the movie as a bookend for the last 10 years of Marvel films, what they're calling the Infinity Saga, the last 22 films, I feel like they did provide a fairly definitive end. It definitely feels like an ending the way they leave the characters. But as a longtime MCU fan, not just a general movie goer, I feel like the movie was a little more rewarding for me because I recognized all of the Easter eggs and references they baked in. There are a lot of moments during the film when they're jumping around to different points in the other movies from the MCU where people might not recognize references. Like, why is the audience laughing so much when Captain America makes this very specific reference? There are even references to deleted scenes from other Marvel movies that people wouldn't recognize unless you're a hardcore Marvel fan and you actually watch all the deleted scenes and bonus features from every single Marvel movie. So as an audience member going to see a movie, your mileage will vary depending on how long you've been a Marvel fan and how deeply you've been a Marvel fan. I've had a chance to see the movie again since I posted my non-spoilery review earlier this week after the premiere, and I will still say I double down on the fact that it is a love letter to the characters, the original six Avengers particularly, and a love letter to the fans. But as a movie, it feels a little bit more like a big event piece. Like you go to a theme park like Disneyland and you experience the world of Marvel. It's kind of like that, but put into a movie. And it's so different in terms of tone and pacing than Infinity War that a lot of people who are just casual Marvel fans might actually like Infinity War more than Avengers Endgame because there's so much more character work being done during Avengers Endgame. There are actually long stretches of the film where there is no action scenes. It's really not until like the third act to get to the really big, Infinity War level action but when they do it is over the top and I will say that they are getting a lot better at handling those everybody at once scenes when things get so crazy on screen so even though it seems like they have hundreds and hundreds of characters on screen at the same time it still feels like you're able to orient yourself and understand what's going on and follow the action of the main character that you're supposed to be following during the scene. So here's where we got to get really specific about the characters, talk about their arcs, how we feel like they left them off. So we'll say careful for spoilers one more time because we'll be talking about the endings of these characters, starting with Captain America. One of my biggest surprises of the film is that they did not kill Captain America because Chris Evans had been talking about leaving the character for so long. Like he wanted to just go off and do other things before the film came out. The Russos are like, well, you know, Chris Evans might not be playing Captain America anymore, but he might not be completely done in the MCU. You'll understand what that means after the film comes out 
Now we actually know what that means. He's actually going to participate in a special Marvel What If TV show. I'll talk about that when I talk about more Phase 4 stuff, but he'll continue to play Captain America in the past in other projects. So Chris Evans will still be a version of Captain America, just not the one in present day, because now we have Old Man Cap. And I know there are a lot of questions about the logic of how we wind up with Old Man Cap at the end of the movie because of the way they use time travel during the film. I'll talk a little bit more about the logic of the time travel when I do Easter eggs and breakdown videos, but I do feel like they gave him a good ending, even if it wasn't the ending you wanted, it was a definitive ending for the character that gave him a version of what he'd been fighting for this whole time. Like he has the conversation with Tony during the film where he tells him to get a life. He has the kid, he has Pepper Potts, you need to get a life like me. So he's sitting there thinking about it and during the film he comes to the conclusion. So at the end of the film when he goes back to be with Peggy Carter, it feels like something that he'd wanted this whole time but just hadn't been willing to let himself have. For the most part, I've been seeing two reactions to that story. Either people are happy that he got that happy ending of sorts, or two, they're just confused about the logic of the time travel. Talking about Iron Man, though, obviously the other big character of the film. I said it earlier this week, all the actors bring their A-game. Their performances are fantastic, and I think a little more rewarding for longtime MCU fans, like you have the Cap versus Cap moment. That really is America's ass. I could do this all day. Yeah, yeah, I got it. I know. I've got eyes on Loki. That was actually the moment referencing the Thor of the Dark World deleted scene when Loki turned into Captain America that I mentioned earlier. My opinions about the Iron Man arc are a little bit different just because their take on the Iron Man character in the MCU is so different from comic book Iron Man. So comic book Iron Man does not get married, he doesn't have any children, he does have successors, but it's a very Batman battle for the cow situation where people try to take up his legacy but nobody can ever quite measure up so eventually Iron Man himself finds a way to come back like during Civil War 2 where he winds up going into this weird trance-like coma state then coming back after they rebooted all the titles. So a lot of people went into the movie expecting to see some twist like that, whereas Doctor Strange said this is the only way that things could go down. I can't tell you what's going to happen because if I do, it won't wind up happening. And because Robert Downey Jr. is getting older and more expensive for them to hire. So I think part of the reason for the way they let Iron Man go out was to solve a bunch of practical problems and to give him a definitive end to the character, a situation that he would not try to weasel out of using his intellect. Maybe I'll wisecrack my way out of this situation. So I do commend them for trying to do the revolutionary thing of having consequences consequences stick. He uses the gauntlet and they stick to the rules that they set up during the movie. It almost kills Thanos to use the gauntlet twice, like you see him hobbling early in the film, like he's barely alive anyway, he's so weak. Then when the Hulk tries to use it, Hulk is completely messed up Thanos style, like he doesn't heal the way Hulk would normally heal. So when you see a normal person like Iron Man use it, there have to be consequences. Of course he's not going to survive that moment. And the twist that they send him out on is just as subversive as the twist that they brought him in on. Like it was a really big deal that a superhero would reveal his identity openly to everyone. I am Iron Man and the press just explodes. Oh my god, he revealed his secret identity. It's a big deal that they actually stick to consequences and let him go out using the logic that they set up earlier in the film. Comic book movies are famous for ignoring the own rules that they set up during film. So I know there are a lot of questions about the logic of certain twists of the film, but like Kevin Feige said, after Infinity War, we felt like we'd never seen the heroes lose before. People feel like comic book heroes always win. The heroes will always win. Well, what happens when they don't win? So that's your Infinity War Empire Strikes Back ending. But like he also said, we also feel like people have never seen an ending for these characters. Would it be revolutionary if there was an ending to their story? So even if you're not really happy about what they did with the Iron Man character and you wanted it to go down a different way, I do give them extra points for trying to do something so subversive. Like, wow, I thought we were just going to keep seeing versions of this character till Robert Janney Jr. was 100 years old. How crazy that they would do it this way. One of the greatest lines of the movie, I love you 3000, I love that moment with Iron Man. And even if it is kind of weird to see the character with a child, like I said, very different from comic book Iron Man, I feel like he completely sold those scenes with that child actor. Largely, I think that's just because Robert Downey Jr. is such a fantastic actor and sold that stuff so well. 
Thor was also one of the more controversial characters during the movie. Your mileage will vary on Thor depending on how much you like comedic Thor. Some people just like really serious badass Thor. Some people like the more emotionally accessible Thor that gets to tell jokes and sort of be in on the fun with everyone else. I was surprised at their choice to go with thick Thor. Thick with two C's. You could give him three C's. He had a pretty big gut. But I feel like by the time they got to that third action scene where you see him in the background of shots, they sort of slimmed him down a little bit with CG. You've probably been watching the movie and watching Chris Hemsworth do all these fitness videos on his Instagram the past couple of weeks, so it's really ironic to watch in and see beer belly Thor while Chris Hemsworth is being super fit in real life. I'm assuming they just use a combination of prosthetics and special effects to make him look fat during the film. It wasn't like Chris Hemsworth gained 60 pounds during the span of a couple weeks just to film these scenes. I'm really excited about the idea of Asgardians of the Galaxy in future movies. I get what they were going for with his character. They wanted him to be just completely dejected, depressed, not being able to deal with what happened during the movie, not getting past his grief. I loved all the scenes that he got with his mother. Obviously, I loved all the action scenes towards the end of the film where he's dual wielding. And then we'll talk a little bit more about that when I talk about the big action scenes, because some of the big twists, like the one with Thor's hammer, was things from the comics that we've been waiting for this whole time. So the movie tried to pay off a lot of things that have been happening they've been setting up for the past 10 years. So that's why it feels like more of a big event for the fandom instead of just a traditional movie. So I will rank this with my top five, maybe top 10 Marvel films at the end of this. I was a little upset about what they did with the Hulk during the film. I love Professor Hulk. Mark Ruffalo is great as Professor Hulk, just like a very chatty, more emotionally accessible version of the character. Because remember, it's a blending of both of their personalities. So you get the mind of Banner, but he also gets some of the baser instincts of the Hulk, which is why he feels so chatty and he's telling even more jokes because typically Banner is a little more reserved. But there were a couple of things during the movie that they just completely sped through. And one of them was Professor Hulk. Like you just show up and he's already Professor Hulk. They don't give you that moment. He explains it rather than them showing it to you. There were a couple moments during the film that sort of drug and slowed things down a little bit that I felt like they could have gotten rid of in favor of giving you more big payoffs with the characters. Like it would have been better to spend more time with the Hulk setting up the Professor Hulk twist than to watch Ant-Man walk all over the place learning about what happened after the snap. I feel like after he came out of the quantum realm, he could have just gone straight to Cassie's, learned what happened, then gone straight to the Avengers. You don't really need all those other scenes of him just wandering around on the street looking at all the devastation. So I feel like they spent a little too much time early in the film waiting to build up to the team coming back together. But some of those early Iron Man scenes when he first comes back and he's still just a little bit crazy from being stuck in space were fantastic. So I was happy that they included a little bit of that. The Black Widow Hawkeye stuff during the film, probably the best scenes that we've gotten with those characters in the last 10 years. Their emotional arc during the film was great. Scarlett Johansson, some of her best Black Widow, especially early in the film, and then when she and Hawkeye are arguing about who's going to take the hit so that they can get the Soul Stone, that was perfect. And thankfully, Hawkeye was not a joke during the film. There are a lot of Hawkeye Easter eggs that we'll talk about because he has that Marvel Phase 4 TV show that's coming up that I think that they were seeding during this. All the cameos were great. I love the Stanley cameo. Make love, not war. The funny thing is, is they dressed him up to look like real life 70s Stan Lee because Stan Lee was very active during that period. The early 70s was when he transitioned from working on regular comic books every week to becoming the Marvel publisher. And Joe Russo's cameo was a big surprise too. Jim Starlin also within the same breath. Like you're on Joe Russo, then boom, Jim Starlin also in that same support group. I know there are a lot of questions about the logic of some of the twists, like they've sent some characters out in a very definitive way, but then characters from the past come back into present day. So technically you still have some versions of characters running around. So why then couldn't they go into another timeline and grab a past version of Iron Man and Black Widow and bring them into present day? Like I said, I'll talk about that more during Easter eggs, but I think mostly it's in favor of giving them a definitive ending. And if they had gone right back and got another Iron Man in Black Widow, it would have completely trampled on the endings that those characters got. I was fine with the way that they handled time travel, but you need to understand that they're going with Dragon Ball Z future trunks time travel rules. They're not going with Back to the Future or Terminator rules. Every time they go back into the past and change something, it only creates another timeline. It does not change their future. So the future that they go back to will always be the same. Even though there were a lot of questions they did not answer at the end of the film and so much was happening, I'm sure you have a billion questions about the ending of the film. I did feel like they stuck the landing, 
They gave all these characters a nice bookend. It feels like an end for the Avengers, even though there will be more Avengers films. It'll just be a new roster of characters with some of them coming back and some new ones being cycled in. So yes, it was a great film. I had a lot of fun watching it. I'll watch it a couple more times just to catch all the Easter eggs, but I feel like just a lot more rewarding for longtime hardcore MCU fans as opposed to casual moviegoers that will probably enjoy Infinity War more just for its level of action and pacing. So here's my top five Marvel films after seeing Avengers Endgame a couple times, starting with number five, the original Guardians of the Galaxy film. Still feel like that's better than Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Four, Avengers Infinity War. Three, Avengers Endgame. Two, the original Iron Man movie. There'd be no MCU if there was no successful Iron Man. I am Iron Man. They even send him off on that very iconic moment. And then one, my favorite is still Winter Soldier, which they reference so many times during the film. So many of the moments, even when they were in 2012, were referencing Winter Soldier moments. Hail Hydra. Does anybody want to get off this elevator? So once you have a chance to see the movie, or if you've already seen it, just let me know where you rank this movie with your other Avengers films, your favorite moments, what you thought about it. What'll happen is, is I'll name a giveaway winner when I post my breakdown Easter egg stuff happening this weekend. So more Avengers Endgame videos coming in the next couple of days. While you wait for everything, click here to learn about the next Thor film. Chris Hemsworth talking about Thor 4. And click here for my Game of Thrones Season 8 Episode 3 trailer video. Thank you so much for watching. I love you 3000. I'll see you guys tonight.